Hello and welcome to Dateline Abuja. I am Kayla Magua. Let's begin with a rundown of major stories from Nigeria's seat of power. President Muhammad Buhari has disclosed that by the time he leaves office on May 29, 2023, he would have bequeathed a homegrown economy, stable democracy, as well as revamped security forces to Nigeria. He made the statement at a dinner in honor of the 2022 Committee of Business, Political, Media and Civil Society leaders. The president has launched a 62.1 billion naira fund to improve efforts towards sustaining HIV response, address killer diseases and public health emergencies. Speaking at the launch of the HIV Trust Fund, President Buhari promises to continue to prioritize health interventions to address killer diseases and public health emergencies. We have continued to make good our commitment of placing more people living with HIV on treatment annually using national resources. However, strong domestic resources mobilization with an enduring partnership and shared responsibility is required to sustain the response to HIV and other emerging public health emergencies. I hope the HIV Trust Fund of Nigeria will galvanize more of the private sector and others partners to surpass the target of 62 billion naira in the next five years. President Buhari has assured of a recommitment to promises made to the Academic Staff Union of Universities. The president made the pledge when he received members of the Nigeria Inter-Religious Council, led by the co-chairs, the Sultan of Sokoto, Alaji Saad Abubakar, and the president of the Christian Association of Nigeria, Reverend Samson Nayokunli. Which wishes itself well, neglects its educational system, and all its component parts. Therefore, we must value our custodians of knowledge while demonstrating that indeed the service they render in the shape of molding our students to grow into valued and productive members of our society. Accordingly, I have tasked my chief of staff the Honorable Minister of Labor and Employment and Education to make resolving this issue a priority. To show our commitment, several payments have been made over the last six months addressing several of the issues you raised. I would like to encourage us to continue to work with us towards finding solutions to the challenges that confront us. The president has pledged that in the coming months, Nigerians, particularly in the Northeast, will begin to witness a change from the protracted insurgency to peace and development in their communities. He disclosed this during the inauguration of a presidential committee on the repatriation, returns and resettlement of displaced persons in the Northeast. History beckons and Nigerians call on you to be the team that will finally chart this new path to restoration of sustainable peace and progress in the Northeast. And I strongly believe this could lead to the bringing of a template for addressing insurgency and instability in other parts of our country and across the world. Failure to deliver on this tax you have been assigned is not an option. I pledge to you that in the coming months you will begin to witness a shift away from a protracted insurgency to peace building, stabilization, and ultimately development in your respective communities as we embark on a revised approach to addressing this conflict, a return to normalcy. The president is calling for the expansion of access to modern contraceptive methods across the country to address the nation's rising population. 
He made the call at the launch of the revised National Policy on Population for Sustainable Development. He also inaugurated the National Council on Population Management. The new national population policy emphasizes the urgency to address Nigeria's sustained high fertility rate through expanding access to modern family planning, counseling, and commodities, as well as promote birth spacing. This will enable Nigeria to achieve rapid fertility control, improve the health of women, adolescents, newborn children, and other population groups. President Buhari is participating in the 35th Ordinary Session of the Assembly of the African Union Summit in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia. He also virtually presented the country review report of Nigeria to the 31st APR Forum of the African Union. Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo chaired the meeting of a National Research and Innovation Council. Those in attendance at the meeting include the Minister of Works and Housing, Mr. Babatunde Fashola, Minister of Education, Alaji Adamu Adamu, the Minister of Labour and Productivity, Dr. Chris Ngige, as well as the Minister of Water Resources, Engineer Suleiman Adamu, Minister of Finance, Mrs. Zainab Ahmed, and the Minister of Science, Innovation and Technology, Dr. Ubu Nayaonu. Vice President Professor Yemi Oshibajo says there has to be a complete reorientation on the exercise of regulatory authority in the country in order for businesses and investors to thrive in Nigeria. He made the statement after receiving a report from an ad hoc committee of the Presidential Enabling Business Environment Council. We have a 60-day plan. Uh, as you know, the NAP7 was just approved by the PEBEC. That's our usual annual 60-day accelerator. Uh, we have a number of things, automation, regulatory reforms, processes, and we'll give you the document. We're going to track, as usual, with your support for the next 60 days, starting on the 7th, of February and ending on the 7th of April. So it's really now up to MDAs to deliver implementation and as is to track and make sure that everything the council has approved is done. Professor Shibajo represented President Buhari at a second extraordinary ECOWAS summit in Accra, Ghana. The meeting discussed the political situation in Burkina Faso, Mali and Guinea. Welcome back. Let's get down to business. Oil business. Petrol, to be precise. This murky world is the mainstay of Nigeria's economy. A lot of its dealings are shrouded in the utmost secrecy, but the fallouts from these dealings impact us directly as Nigerians. Fuel queues are back in Abuja, and the truth is, we all have no idea why. The NNPC says there's product. The Minister of State for Petroleum, Mr. Timipri Silva, tells us not to engage in panic buying. But there are queues, and sometimes the fuel stations are just non-operational. Well, we went around the nation's capital to find out what really is going on. Please watch this. Long queues of vehicles waiting for fuel at petrol stations. These queues resurfaced as the federal government took a decision to extend the fuel subsidy regime. Some motorists have been on the queue since the early hours of the day as they accused the stations of ordering the product. They are waiting for the government to leave the whole subsidy so they can maximize their profit. It's understandable. If you have an old product, why not sell it at the normal price you got those products uh, for? I don't know if you get it. When they remove the uh, subsidy finally, which I know they will do, then you start selling whatever. If it's 1,000, you sell, we'll buy. Make these things available for us. If I tell you how many hours it takes me to, to buy fuel today, it will surprise you. Okay, assuming I'm working for somebody in the office, would they allow me to go around looking for fuel? It's so bad, so bad. Black market traders are having a field day as commuters continue to wait under the scorching sun to get the product. The queue is causing heavy traffic along some of the major roads. You buy it a litre at around 1,600 and something. If you want to buy it from these uh, black marketers, it's around 3,000, which is almost doubling the price. Please, government should do something about this thing. The Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited had issued a statement assuring residents that there is enough stock to serve Nigerians. 
The Minister of State for Petroleum, Mr. Timipre Silva, had ascribed the situation to panic buying. When people are expecting a certain policy direction, uh, people tend to want to meet, uh, take steps against, against it. Some want to profiteer, uh, and of course they try to begin to hoard. Of, some people also want to make sure that they uh, stock enough uh, uh, PMS in their homes so that whenever there is uh, this uh, uh, announcement, they will be able to have enough st uh, in storage. So all that will uh, inform the reason for this panic buying and, of course, panic hoarding. According to the NNPC statement, which was signed by its group general manager, Group Public Affairs Division, Mr. Garbadin Mohammed, the company is cautioning sellers of the product against hoarding. <laughs> to prevent cases of hoarding of the product, officials of the Abuja Zonal Office of the Nigerian Midstream and Downstream Petroleum Regulatory Authority are inspecting petrol stations in the Federal Capital Territory to ensure they are not hoarding the, the product. product. Our focus is to ensure that we don't have hoarding in the, in the Abuja metropolis and that product um, marketers are selling products at the approved pump price and um, we want to ensure sufficiency of products. Any filling station that is hoarding will be penalized. So we'll, we'll make sure we take the necessary action according to the Petroleum Act. This marketer says it currently has enough stock to meet demands of customers but it raises concern over the poor condition of roads in some parts of the country, which it says slows down transportation of the product from depot to a station, thereby creating scarcity. Sometimes when we call our, our drivers, they are complaining us the road is no good. That's what he told me sometimes. His position is echoed by the chairman of the Major Oil Marketers Association of Nigeria, Olumide Adioshun, who further explains that the glitch is a temporary setback that should not cause any panic. The supply feels uh, right. I can say that from, uh, from an operator's point of view, uh, from, an, from an operator's point of view, we could always do with more supply. But I think in terms of supply, we're getting just about what we need. And the the pressure you're seeing at the pump, particularly in the more far out locations, is really to do with the challenges around transportation. Uh, we have spoken in the past about the challenges we have with our road, which has increased the turnaround time of, uh, of vehicle of trucks and tankers. And with the increased turnaround time, which it, it, it almost means that you need more trucks on the road because it's taking a, a transporter twice as long to supply exactly the same amount of, uh, of fuel. So I think they are, they're, it's, uh, it's probably it's reacting to a kink in supply, but generally I don't think it's any, I don't think it's any cause for, um, for alarm. As far as I'm aware, the supply, the supply to my members is good. As the fuel queues ease in the nation's capital, the downstream petroleum regulatory agency is promising to continue monitoring fuel stations to ensure that there is no hoarding of the products. My guest on the program is Professor Yinka Omorugbe, a professor of energy law, member of the two oil and gas sector reform implementation committees, OGIC-1 and OGIC-2. She was the chair of the legal regulatory committee between the years 2000 and 2006, which produced the very first petroleum industry bill. She is very vocal in her opposition to the continuous payment of fuel subsidies. She describes a recent decision by the Buhari administration to continue the fuel subsidy regime as more political than economic. On the rise in the price of everything, if the subsidies are abruptly removed, she insists that Nigerians will adjust as the market forces compete and the price stabilizes. And contrary to popular opinion, it doesn't take too long to invest and see results in infrastructure development. Professor Morogbe, welcome to Dateline Abuja. Thank you very much. Let's talk a bit about fuel subsidy. How do you feel about all the conversations going on around it might not be removed or it's going to be on for the next 18 months? 
a lot of Nigerians are probably a little conflicted about this situation. Some governors said, look, we have to take this out. And there was a lot of back and forth on this particular conversation until where we are right now is going to be sustained for the next 18 months at least. What are your thoughts on this? Uh, I'd have to say my thoughts are probably sad thoughts because like so many people who are watchers in the industry and um, those who have been participants or partakers in some way or the other, um, we're a bit sad because in the first place, the reform that we're talking about that is supposed to have been heralded by the Petroleum Industry Act has the creation of a very virile um, industry that is deregulated. And that is a big issue when you still have something called a subsidy around. So it's uh, not a cause for happiness. So, so you're anti-subsidy. Would that be fair? Oh, yes, totally so. I really cannot see what benefit we really get in real terms from the subsidy. So you do it, know that many Nigerians would probably oppose that thinking. Oh, I know that. Because what we've been socialized to believe is if you take out the subsidy, oh, then the cost comes to Nigerians. We would have to pay more for fuel, which means that we'd have to pay more for everything. So how, how, do, how will the government be able to convince? Because this is something, it's going to happen eventually, I think. It has to happen. It has, it, to, it happen. has to happen. So how do we get Nigerians to buy in? Well, I think Nigerians have to look and see what way the subsidy benefits them. The average Nigerian is going around now with substandard schools, substandard hospitals, transportation that um, basically doesn't work. So many things are going wrong. Um, we have skyrocketing inflation right now. Um, how is the subsidy actually affecting the Nigerian in a very, very positive way? We have a distorted market right now. We have a situation whereby we have um, fuel that is being sold at far less than the neighboring countries. When you have that, what is going to happen? It's only natural that we will become the supplier for the region. So a lot of what you think is being um, used for the benefit of Nigerians is actually being used for the benefit of uh, the entire region. We don't have statistics. We don't have data. So we have to really be able to sit down. I have said that a lot of the costs that we're talking about have to be realistically interrogated. We have to look at the costs. We have to see to what extent the supposed costs are, um, to what extent we're actually fueling inefficiencies. So do you think that this shelving of the uh, removal of subsidy for 18 months, what with the Dangote refinery coming up and all these conversations about the removal of fuel, of fuel subsidy, do you think that we can successfully remove fuel subsidy in the next 18 months? Because I do understand that shelving something for 18 months doesn't mean that they're going to remove it at the end of that. Mm -mm, but what, what do you think? Do you think it's something that can be done? It can be done, but first of all, if you count 18 months from now, it's not this government that is going to be in power. Do the president has done two terms, so it's a new <laughs> it's president a new set, that a new is coming. A new Whether he problems. is going to now decide that he wants to face that right at the beginning will depend on the work that has been done, the groundwork that has been done within these 18 months. So we have to wait and see. Like I say, if there are a lot of projects that, are, that um, come into fruition, that are projects that really will help the common man and make a difference to his life then. I guess that um, it will be easier to sell the subsidy removal, but as at now, people are just looking at the fact that oh, gari is more expensive, beans is more expensive, many people can't eat, literally people are starving right now, and then you want to add into this toxic mix increased prices because that is what's going to happen and just not just increase prices of uh, transportation but increase prices Goods, of all services, these everything yeah but if you have some of these things in place it will help to cushion the effects i believe for example that if you could convert so many cars into using cng that alone would help because they won't be affected anymore 
and they'll be using a fuel that is in fact cheaper. So there are a lot of these projects. Uh, I think that the people that are actually in government and are driving these projects should actually come out and talk about these things and roll out very grand plans and work like crazy. If there's been a lot of groundwork, then it'll be a lot easier. But for a new government to come in and have a subsidy removal as its first act, it's you, hard. So you, you think this uh, decision by the Buhari administration was a political one? Totally so. Totally so. <laughs> Totally so, because I mean, so many different elements come in. The, the subsidy issue now is an emotional issue. It's a question of people feeling that they're getting nothing from petroleum. They're suffering all the negatives of underdevelopment. And the only thing that they have to hold on to is this petroleum subsidy that is making transportation less comparatively speaking, and supposedly making life easier. But in fact, it's not making life easier. And I think that, like I said, it's something we need to interrogate. We need to actually spend time on this. There should be studies, there should be data, there should be statistics. And from all these studies should come information that should be readily available to Nigerians in very simple, basic English, devoid of um, technical terms that So if a new government people. came in and you had their ear, this is the, would you want him to do this first? Yes, but I think this government needs to lay down the grain. Uh, um, so the this government work. lays down the ground. And work. I think they want to, from um, remarks that they have made. I think they want to. They see that it's important. It's an imperative. We really don't have much of a choice. That really is the truth of the matter. Well, Professor Morigbe, Thank you so much for Thank being you. with us on Daily and Abuja. And Thank good luck you. with the work that you do. <laughs> Thank you very much for having me. Thanks to Professor Yinka Omorogbe and to everyone who spoke to us on the program. It's sad to see the fuel queues again, artificial or non-artificial scarcity. We should be above this level by now as a country. And the subsidy regime conversation looks like one we'll be having for a very long time. Whatever side of the divide you stand on, exporting crude and buying petrol is not realistic in 2022. It's just not realistic that we do not refine our own crude oil. Until we fix this anomaly, the dance will continue. And with every election year, the removal or non-removal of subsidy will constantly be used as a bargaining chip. That's Dilan Abuja this week. Please let us know the happenings in your neighborhood using the social media handle showing right now on your screen. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Kayla Magua. See you next time.